got yourself a new iPad? Here are 12 settings and changes you need to do first before starting to use it. I'm sure these 12 changes will help you get the best out of your new iPad. First and maybe one of the most important things to do after getting an iPad, update your iPad OS to the latest version. A lot of iPads, especially if you have got it from a retailer, would have been packed many months before, which means it would be missing a lot of important security and feature updates when you buy it. So first thing after initial setup, go to settings, general, software update and refresh to see if you have any pending updates. Install it right away to get more features and security fixes. Second, customize the display settings. iPads come with the default one fit for all display settings, which might not be the best setting for you. Customize it for your needs. To do this, go to settings again, select display and brightness. Now select light or dark mode. I personally like the dark mode all the time, so I'm gonna enable the dark mode here. You can also choose dark mode only after sunset through the option settings here. Next, set the most comfortable text size for the iPad. I like it to be the smallest because it then shows so much more text on the screen but if you like it to be bigger choose the text size here also enable true tone if it's not enabled true tone will set the white balance according to the environment you can choose the auto lock timeout values and also choose the display zoom at the bottom display zoom will either make the whole ipad ui more compact or relaxed trust me once these are all set as per your likings it truly transforms the ipad if these display settings are not enough there are a lot more hidden settings in a different menu go to accessibility and select display and text sizes here here there are a lot more options and customizations like auto brightness bold text etc pick what works best for you third you have customized the ui and display let's now customize the home screen as well change the default lock screen and home screen wallpaper you can do it in a couple of ways from the lock screen long press the screen now tap plus at the bottom here you can pick a wide range of wallpapers you can even pick your own album picks to be set as a wallpaper I'm gonna pick this iOS 18 wallpaper here you can customize even more I'm gonna tap the clock and select the font size and color I'm also gonna add a couple of lock screen widgets to show my airpods and iPhone battery I'm gonna choose this as my lock screen and home screen wallpaper now, on the home screen, there are a few things to do first. If you had set up your iPad with iPhone data, you will see a ton of apps on your home screen. These might not be necessary on your iPad home screen. You can either long press the app and delete the app one by one, or if you need the app but just not on the home screen, do this instead. Long press on an app, it will start wiggling while holding the wiggling app Tap on all the apps that you want on your home screen, drag them to the first page and leave them there. Once you have all the apps you need on the first home screen, long press the home screen again, tap the dots at the bottom. Here you will see all the home screen pages with all the apps. Now simply unselect the pages you don't want to see, that's it. Your home screen is now clean with minimal pages and only with the apps you want them on it. While you're on the home screen, make sure to add widgets to your home screen by long pressing the home screen and tapping the plus icon. Select as many widgets in ways you would like to add them on your home screen. My favorites are the weather widget, reminder widget and notes widget. Fourth, it's not much of a setting, but a feature to know when using iPad keyboards. When you have your keyboard open, if you find it too intrusive, you can change it to a floating keyboard by long pressing on this icon at the bottom and selecting floating. This way, the keyboard is unlocked and small. You can move it anywhere on the screen. An awesome benefit, this floating keyboard also supports swipe to type feature as well. If you want to dock back, just pinch anywhere on the keyboard and it'll go back to full size again. Another feature, you can also use the keyboard as a trackpad by long pressing the spacebar. The whole keyboard becomes a trackpad. You can use it to move your cursor anywhere on the screen. Fifth, change your battery settings to extend the health of your iPad battery. This is unfortunately only if you're using the M4 iPad Pro or M2 iPad Air. In settings, battery settings, you can enable this 80% limit on charging. This means your battery will only charge to 80% maximum, even if it's plugged in. The reason to do this is this will help prolong the battery health on your iPad. 100% charge is stressful for batteries and charging to 80% will help your iPad hold charge better in long run. 
Sixth, to use your iPad close to like a computer, enable Stage Manager. Do you know you can open multiple apps all at once like this? To do this, open an app, then tap the three dots at the top, pick Split View and choose any other app you want to be open side by side. Already nice, but you can still take it to the next level with Stage Manager. First, to enable Stage Manager, go to Settings, select Multitasking and Gesture and enable Stage Manager. You can also enable the Stage Manager from the control center like this. Once you enable and when you open an app, you can see a floating dock on the side. Now your iPad is like a desktop with multiple apps open all at once in different windows. You can easily switch to a different window by tapping on the floating app. You can resize an app by dragging the corner symbol here like this to your liking. If you want more than one app on your screen, just long press another app and bring it into the screen. Now these two apps are like in one window and you can switch between these multiple apps screens as well. Seventh, set some shortcuts for easily opening notes and taking screenshots. Trust me, this will come incredibly handy when you're using your iPad for productivity. Go to settings, under multitasking and gestures, enable the last option called swipe finger from corner. When you enable it, default option shows swiping from bottom left corner will take a screenshot and swiping from bottom right corner will enable quick notes. So as the name suggests, in whatever app you are, you can swipe from left corner, the iPad will automatically take a screenshot for you. Similarly, you can swipe from the right corner, it will automatically open a quick note for you where you can jot down notes from wherever you are. Nifty feature, isn't it? Eighth, set up Safari properly. I love Safari, which is the default web browsing, and with little customization, you can get the most out of it. In settings, open Safari settings. First, set your favorite search engine of your choice. Google is the default, but you can get options to set a few other search engines as default as well, if you like. Next, this is a personal choice. Under tabs, I enable separate tab bars. This way in Safari, I get to see all the tabs and a separate address bar. Under the default compact bar, the tabs and address bar is all merged out and I don't love it as much as the desktop style address bar. Another setting I need to be mindful about is the setting for request desktop website. By default, Safari will open the desktop version of a website on your iPad. Sometimes it will be useful to open the mobile version or nicer UI. If you find liking the mobile version of a website more, you can ask Safari to load the mobile version of all the websites by enabling this link. Ninth, a very important setting to keep your iPad secure as well as save battery life, fix your location service settings. You see, some apps will keep using your location data in the background even when the app is not open. This will drain your battery but more importantly, it's not secure. To fix this, go to settings privacy and security and tap location services. You can already see how many apps have access to your location data. If any of them have location access set to always, change it to either while using only or to never. Tenth, start using a password manager or with iOS 18, passwords app. You might have like hundreds of websites with each app having a username, login and password. It's difficult to remember all of them. With iOS 18, there is a new app installed by default called passwords. This will automatically store all your login and password details when you enter it once on a web page or app. And next time when you need to fill them in, the app will autofill it for you. The more important reason to start using password manager is because now you get to set very strong and unique passwords for each website rather than a simple password for all of your websites. If you are on iOS 17 or before, just update to iOS 18 and you will see this passwords app. 11th, customize your control center. Control center is one place for some quick access buttons. You can customize and add controls as per your likings. If you are on iOS 17, you can go to settings and tap control center. Here you can add or remove your most used controls to be visible on the control center. But if you are on iOS 18, then you get so much more customization options. Swipe on the right to open the control center, long press on the control center and icons 
will start wiggling. You can now move them around wherever you want, resize them to make them bigger and even add more controls by tapping this add a control button at the bottom. There are so much more options to add here. In fact, you can keep adding more control center pages. I have one for basic controls, one for music, one for smart home controls and more. Play around and customize how you would like to use it the most. Okay, finally, 12th, multitasking gesture settings. We have already spoken about a few multitasking options, but this setting is specifically about multitasking gestures. Go to settings, tap multitasking and gestures. Here, enable two options if it's not enabled already. First is the productivity gesture and second is the four and five finger gestures. You can see what each of them do already in the description, but my main use case for these are with enabling productivity gestures. When I'm typing or creating a document, I can just swipe left with three fingers to undo something and if I swipe right with three fingers, it'll redo the last action. Undoing and redoing is so simple with this gesture. It works on any apps with an undo redo action. There is also the three finger tap for similar options. With enabling four and five finger gestures, it becomes so much easier to go between apps. On any screen, just swipe to the left or right with four or five fingers. It will take you to the next or previous app. You can do this already with swiping at the bottom, but if you have used Mac trackpad, your muscle memory will help you go between apps with so much ease. You can also close apps by pinching with five fingers. These are all small time saver gestures to make you more productive. Okay, those were my 12 settings and tips for new iPad users. Were they useful for you? Do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.